What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, I'm gonna teach you guys how to buy one of these Pandora's box control panels, gut it, and then put it into your own arcade or arcade one up. So I see this question get asked a lot. A couple of people have seen my videos like with Casa and Bodega. I do see this question get a lot, asked a lot on like the Facebook groups like RK one up modders. Um, basically, people search online, they look up RK control panel and you most likely definitely came across one of these which is a Pandora's box control panel. You can find these for like 150 bucks to 180 bucks. Uh, they're cheap. The only reason that they are really cheap is that the joysticks are cheap, the buttons are cheap, the whole control panel is trash. The only thing that's valuable inside of these is the actual PCB board in it, which is the Pandora's box. Now, if you are getting your feet wet into modding or you know you want to do arcade stuff like I do, I started with the Pandora's box. You can take a look at my videos way back, uh, Pandora's box four, and I'm still using Pandora's boxes. Pandora's boxes, there are some advantages, disadvantages compared to the Raspberry Pi or PC builds, but this honestly is the best way to get your feet wet and to start and get a little glimpse of modding. Again, you can put this inside of anything. I'm building a 27 inch arcade cabinet right now, which is why I'm making this video because the next video is a 27 inch build that I'm doing. Um, you could put these in arcade one ups. So anything that will have buttons and joysticks, you could put a Pandora's box in it. So modifying a lot of these, I mean, I'm at like 100 plus mods on these. I've developed my own personal way that I do. Um, I'm gonna show you my way, but my way might not be feasible for you because it depends if you have the tools. I use heat shrinks. Um, and the real big challenge, honestly, is I don't, I don't use RK one-ups. Like, you know, people will ask me to modify theirs, but they don't wanna pay. So my kind of version is gonna be a little bit different because again, I do commonly use the Game Room Solutions cabinets. Their cabinets do lift up. When they do lift up, I do need a lot more slack on the wire than what is given here. So in my situation, we're gonna be doing some heat shrinking. Um, I do have extra Zinmo wiring kits because I always use Zinmos. Um, you're gonna need a Zinmo wiring kit and such. So I basically thought of three different ways that you could do it. To me, they should be fairly easy. If you can't mod these, then I don't think you're ready for another mod, that is my personal opinion. But start slow. Let's open this up. All right, so we're gonna start with the basics where we're gonna take our control panel. Again, these are total trash. You don't wanna save these, they are garbage. So I don't care about beating this thing up at all. Um, again, I'm not even saving the control deck. I have five of them on hand. But we're gonna start with the basics. We're gonna get a drill or a Phillips head and we're gonna remove these six screws at the edges. Not these, you don't need these. These are just rubber feet. You need these right here. As far as this control panel, you're gonna look for the ones that are basically attached to the plexi. There's two actually on the side, my mistake, there's eight. And done, awesome. There's two actually on the side, my mistake, there's eight. And done, awesome. All right, so now that you have it open, be sure to kind of, you know, Gently open it, because as you could see, you could see my dilemma personally. One wire harness for one player, which is player one, is shorter than player two's harness, so you don't want to really rip this out. Uh, best thing to do right now in this situation, right here is your Pandora's box board. This right here is the family JAMA. Basically, we're gonna just wiggle it out. We're gonna deal with this later on, but we don't need that right now. We need to focus on this. This is the main thing. So again, once you disconnected, you are now free to move about and such. So again, you can see in my dilemma here that I don't have enough slack, at least for player one. 
Player two, I have a lot of slack. There is a lot of slack. I wish they did that with player one, but they saved wire and player one is just basically short. Now, the first method. The first method to make it super easy is to purchase Sanwa buttons. The Sanwa button style has this smaller um, spade head on it or micro switch connector head on it. So if you are looking for a super easy kind of switch, you do need Sanwa buttons. And as you can see the head here, there's basically just a positive and a negative, a ground or a positive, I should say. That's the easiest swap out. Most people, like especially on Facebook, they don't get Sanwa buttons. They usually resort to getting this Amazon kit with the encoders. That's gonna require a little bit more work, which I'll most likely show you. Now, let me show you my dilemma. So my dilemma again is that, again, Game Room Solutions 27 inch arcade cabinet coming up. I do like the micro switches. This to me is a real arcade button. It does have a micro switch. It's your most common arcade button. This one is the LED button with the chrome trim. But all of these, again, have your standard micro switch. The biggest dilemma for me is that, as you can see, standard micro switch and their connector, it is too small. It doesn't fit. This is where I need to basically grab a Zinmo wire kit. And I get these because number one, the wire is already long enough. It actually adds the extra slack that I need. And it's already got the connector to it. And again, one, two, three, this clicks in. So that is my personal issue that I need to do. Now, real quick, as far as the easy way, if you did get sand wise, just got to keep in mind what orientation you are. Now that we flip this over, like player one is on this side, player two is here, you know, depending on how you want to hold it. Basically, if you do a flip like this, then player one is on this side now. I mean, it's entirely up to you on how you want to do it, but you want to take your second control panel and match it out the same way so you don't get confused. So this here, I have player one here. So if I flip this, player one on the left, if I take the game room solutions panel, I'm going to put player one left and flip just like that. So basically now I have both of my control panels looking exactly the same. This part's not really rocket science now. There's basically, I mean, again, it's difficult because this is micro switches. This isn't a Sanwa stick, but basically you would slowly take this out one by one. So there's always a ground and a positive, and then you would be, you know, bringing it now up to the next one and such. As you can see, I'm limited on space. I can't even do that. So the best thing is to take a picture of this. Note what color went to what button and then unhook all these and then bring it up okay so basically as you can see here button six is here it's got the green green would go here that's button six button five has blue as you can see button five you'll put as blue so it's basically you're copying and pasting take a picture of it and uh that's probably your easiest way as far as going about with sand was the joystick is the one thing like you're going to have to kind of assemble it. And again, I'll show you it later on. You're going to have to assemble it. And then while the actual game is running, you're going to have to test which one was up, down, left, right, because you might not have this exact duplicate style joystick. Other than that, that's basically it. You have your start, your coin at the bottom here. It should literally be a copy and paste transfer. The joystick is the one thing like you're going to have to kind of assemble it. And again, I'll show you it later on. You're gonna have to assemble it. And then while the actual game is running, you're gonna have to test which one was up, down, left, right, because you might not have this exact duplicate style joystick. Other than that, that's basically it. You have your start, your coin at the bottom here. It should literally be a copy and paste transfer. Okay, so next technique is my technique, but a little bit easier for you guys because you guys might not want to heat shrink and stuff and you might not want to buy extra wiring. You will still need to do some work, meaning splicing. Splicing is where basically you're going to, you know, trim off the plastic housing to expose bare wire. You will have to do that, especially with the grounds, but basically you're going to be buying these. Quick disconnects, you can find these at Home Depot. Um, really, you do need a special crimper for that, but some people have gotten away with basically really squeezing the hell out of it with pliers. But 
this is kind of basic here and now to start this type again all these connectors here are useless to me but i didn't want to take a picture of the control panel so all i'm going to do is basically cut the wire with enough wire to show me what color was this button so i'm going to literally go right along and snip i'm gonna snip you might want to do a little bit more of a cleaner job than me because you might need the wiring meaning that you might need the extra slack for me i don't but again basically i'm just going along and i'm gonna snip i'm gonna snip i'm gonna snip leaving at least some color coding to each button this way i can see it this here the joystick i'm just gonna pop this out this connector to me is trash i'm not gonna use this so i'm gonna cut this too but i'm gonna leave this connected this way at least i know these are the joystick that's it that's what I base off of. That's what I see right now. So basically with this, I didn't need to take a picture, but I could see button two is white. Button, uh, button one is pink. Button three was gray. So when it comes time for me, after I do all of my work on these wires, I basically could just plug it right into my micro switches. Now I'm going to show you real quick going along with what I said. If you do go about getting the Home Depot connectors, you're going to take your wire. You could do it with a scissor. So now basically this is where the tedious part is. You're going to have to do that times 22. <laughs> and then just to really kind of show you the real way, but I don't want to waste the head. This is the, the actual crimping tool. You basically take this and then you squeeze it and it will definitely be locked in for life. This right now, yeah, I could pull it out. See, it wasn't too, you know, I didn't squeeze it too tight. But that's the one downside with using pliers. You do have to really squeeze this hard. Now real quick, I'll show you what I do. So first things first, we do need to kind of expose. As you can see, all the things that just dropped are grounds. These are daisy chain grounds. So this went to this. This went to this. So it was basically short grounds. You're going to basically see one wire, black wire, that is always ground. Black is always ground. So as you can see, I'm losing all my blacks. And now I take off the plastic sheathing. This is what I need to work with now. So basically there's a couple ways I do it. I already have this one stripped. I'm going to do it the right way. I'm going to basically take this. I'm going to strip bare wire out. I do like to have excess on this. So this is good to go. I now take a Zinmo connector. I like my slack. So I'm going to cut this right here right at the end this way i have all the slack that i need so this goes bye bye i'm going to take my splicer now well actually before that i'm going to get ready with my heat shrink before i before i strip this wire now i'm going to grab my heat shrink so the heat shrink tubing i have like a whole kit from amazon really great stuff really cheap you do need a heat gun this heat shrink tube though is too long so instead of me wasting it i actually cut it in half this way now i could have one tube do two wires what i'll do with this now is that i'm going to put the heat shrink tubing on this wire i'll let it drop i'll see it later right now we're going to take this wire and we're going to strip this and again i do like to have excess just like that at least about half an inch and with my camera to focus at least about a half an inch just like that now I'm going to take my harness that's here. It's a coincidence that I use green to green. I don't really have all the colors, obviously. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take these. I'm going to twirl these a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And now basically I'm going to take this, bring it down, grab my heat shrink tubing, and then cover it over just like that, making sure that it's covering both wires. And I'm going to grab my heat gun and shrink it. Can't really do this with one hand, but maybe I can. Definitely don't want to heat this plastic up. This here, I'm going to use this. It will shrivel up quick. So I'm going to take the heat shrink tubing. Done. That is it. That wire now ain't going nowhere. And I got the extra slack that I need for player one. Basically, if you don't want to use heat shrink, you're going to have to grab your trusty old electrical tape and you're going to want to definitely tape 
each one, making sure no wire was exposed. Now the advantage to the Zinmo kit is the grounds. So we do have our grounds, that's the daisy chain ground. All I gotta do is disconnect, cut off the, this right here. So these are daisy chain grounds. All I gotta do is cut off the end and then basically tie in one time and now I got all daisy chains available. Again, pretty basic, but that is how you start. I'll do one more with you guys just so you could see it. Again, I got, I got, it's a weird coincidence that I basically had green to green, but let's grab a wire that I don't have. Let's just say, for example, this white. So I'm gonna take this white, do what I said. I'm gonna do at least half inch, splice off, awesome. Strain it out, we're good. I'm gonna grab another Zinmo connector. As you can see with this connector, this goes bye-bye, boop, awesome. Before I splice into that, I need to find my blue, here it is. I'm gonna put my blue heat shrink tubing onto this, let that fall down, another half inch. You don't wanna to go too much or else the heat shrink tubing won't cover it. I'm gonna grab my harness again. I'm gonna do white to white, not white to white. <laughs> I'm gonna connect the white, I should say. Give it a lot of twirls, as you can see here, this thing ain't going nowhere. Um, you could cut off excess worst case scenario, so we'll cut that. Bring it down. Grab my heat shrink tube. And cover. Now that we covered it, grab our heat gun. That is it. Done. Clean. Now the only big thing, when we get to putting the wires to here, I'm not looking for green here. I'm looking for white. So you want to look for the wire that's after the, the shrink tubing. So for example, this one here is button two. That's going to go right here. Into here. Boom. Because white, white, white. That's really it. Pause the video, get all your stuff situated. I buy everything on Amazon. Literally, heat gun was Amazon. The shrink tubing is Amazon. But me as a business, I do need this setup because I like to keep things clean. You personally, if you're doing this as a one and done kind of situation, you could always use electrical tape. But I can't stress it enough, make sure you electrical tape the entire connection. Even if you have the littlest of bare wires sticking out, that could touch a ground, which then will activate the button. So. You gotta be careful with that. So just real quick, again, I got ground daisy chain from the Zinmo, and I'm gonna cut off the tip. Just like so. I got a nice little wire stripper with me here. A little bit more actually. And like I said, on the actual harness itself, there will be one black wire that's always ground and so far it should look like this basically you have a bunch of wires extended again mine are heat shrunk and we do have the ground daisy chain we are now ready to transfer it here i always like to start with the ground daisy chain first it just keeps the wiring nice and neat so i'm going to ground these and again when it comes to the ground daisy chain you want one set for player one and another set for player two. So you should have two sets. When you do get Zinmos, they will always give you two sets. Basically on the ground, basically for player one, if you wanted to future-proof it, um, again, Pandora's boxes don't use the four admins like, like Raspberry Pis. So I'm doing six buttons, these coin and star buttons for player one right here. And since I have the daisy chain, I'm gonna put the four here Basically, it helps to future-proof it if we wanted to make this a Raspberry Pi build. So I right now got all the grounds wired up. Kind of hard to see black on black, but all the grounds are wired up. Uh, when it comes to the joystick, I personally do like to leave one of these clips alone just for the joystick. Some people do like to tap into here, like on an actual micro switch. I like to just keep it on its own, not to mention we do have extra slack. So you could either cut the extra, but again, I always leave one for the actual joystick. 
Um, in this case, because I have already the admins, I am going to remove the slack. This way we don't need this. And again, I do have my one ground for the joystick. All right, now the fun part begins. Again, we're doing player one first. So basically all of these right here have to go to buttons. And as you can see, we don't have any spare wires that are left alone. You can see my ground is here, wired up. And again, joystick is the last thing we're gonna do. So I didn't cut this. At least I do know these four inputs are joysticks. So we're not gonna cut those, but we are gonna connect these. So now just keep in mind here, this colors, these colors, at least in my situation, are not the same colors as what I need to see here. I have to look basically before my heat shrink. So let's take a look real quick. My first one is pink and I do like to try to keep this untangled. So we're gonna untangle this here. I got pink. I do see pink here is button, doo -doo -doo -doo, button one. So on my control panel here, this is button one. Just like so. Awesome, cool. Button one is wired and we follow the same thing. So again, it should be just like that. This should go here and such. Let's go to the next one. You could go in order if you want. I'm gonna actually do that. I'm gonna go in order. So I'm gonna look for the white. My white is here. And again, always trying to take it out, letting it untangle itself. And again, keeping it nice and neat. I go underneath the grounds. So I don't go over and under, I don't go underneath the ground. So we got our white. Next one is a gray. And again, untangling it, going underneath the grounds and in. Going underneath the ground is just gonna keep the wiring much cleaner when we do get to wrapping this and such. Uh, I'm not gonna bore you, I'm gonna keep going. Basically after that five minutes, we have all the wires matching accordingly. So I have my start button here, my coin button is here. So again, this is red here, but don't let the pink fool you because it is actually pink to red. So don't get confused on that. Um, you could now, again, we do have our joystick still here. That's last, we're gonna build the cabinet next. But now that I have this kind of excess plastic, I could basically wire, not wire, clean this up a little bit by closing it. But once I actually build the cabinet, I do wire management in there, keeping things nice and tight. This will just at least keep this in place while I do player two. Not really needed right now, but again, I do like to keep wiring nice and neat. So it doesn't hurt to at least start it up and Cool, so that is it, that's player one. That is player one side, and again, I do have slack for player two, but in my situation, I need the micro switch connector end, so all these have to get cut. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna basically cut along and repeat. All right, now a quick major note about player two before you start cutting. Player two on this specific board, there's an actual button that is black. It does have a black wire, and as you can see, we do have our black grounds. Um, so there's two things you could do. You could either cut this wire last so you don't get confused, or me personally, I'm going to take the ground daisy chain, and I'm going to cut that now, and I'm going to connect my daisy chain right now to this because I might get this wire confused. So I'd rather knock this out real quick. I'm gonna grab my second player daisy chain. Again, disconnecting the connector that we don't need. Before I splice, I'm gonna cut my heat shrink. I'm gonna throw the heat shrink on it. Gotta make sure I'm in camera. Yeah, we're gonna splice this. Give me a little bit more on the ground and we're gonna connect this heat shrink it right now this way I don't mix it up again only player two has this one random black wire on it so got some excess here we're gonna cut this out awesome and we are going to grab our gun and heat shrink 
Now that we got that, again, I isolated my grounds. Now we could go along and do what we did before. I already cut this. And we could just, again, making sure we have enough wire just to see. I don't even need the ground, but boom. Second player is disconnected. At least I do still see my colors here. So we're going to do the same thing. All right, and then after all that is set and done, we should be able to remove this garbage control panel. And we now have a completely wired deck ready for the Pandora's box. So now in my situation, I'm gonna build the cabinet, put this in, and then the Pandora's box will be last. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is remove the actual Pandora's box PCB. Again, I am running the 18S Pro, and mine does come with a Wi-Fi antenna. So you do wanna kinda of be careful with this here. This is basically on like some hot glue. If you take like a flathead screwdriver and just remove the glue, it'll pop off. There we go. Give this a little wiggle. And our Wi-Fi antenna is disconnected. Okay, so now this does have a speaker connected to it. We don't need this. Um, you could use it if you wanted to connect your existing like arcade one-up speaker. Um, you would keep this connected and then basically just put in the terminals. I don't use this at all. Nothing of this is valuable to me. But we do need to keep this power button basically and you could keep the LED strip. Um, the big thing about this Pandora's box and all of them is that there is a power switch. But when it is inside of a cabinet, we don't want power switch. So I'm gonna actually cut this here. And the big thing is that I'm going to connect these together. This way it's basically always on. So there's no need for an actual power switch. So I'm gonna do exactly what I did with my arcade buttons. Basically got my heat shrink tubing, got these wires connected. Awesome. Always wanna make sure you don't actually heat the board, point away from the board. So that's it. You could um, keep the LED strip, which I usually do. Um, and again, this is just basically hot glued in. So you can grab it from any kind of corner. Just like so. And now we just simply take out the three or four screws. There we have it, Pandora's box is totally free. Now you take your Pandora's box, you mount it wherever it's gonna go. As you can see in my situation, like I said, the control panels that I use, basically they do flip up. The wires were not gonna be long enough, so now with the extension all that, this is good to go. We put four screws in to mount this. I left Wi-Fi antenna up top, and also again, this has the LED strip. I basically just put it behind the cabinet to point outwards because this cabinet has air vents and it'll shine through the back. Again, as you can see with the control panel I was saying, all the control panels that I have, they, they do flip open, um, but like an RK one up always has like this plastic decking. So maybe you might not have to do this whole wiring thing, but it's all about the buttons and the micro switch wiring. But we got the four screws in and basically now I'm gonna just take my Pandora's box connector, which is at the bottom of the cabinet here. And we're gonna put it in. Basically there is only one way, there's a little tab. You can kind of see the tab here. You wanna make sure that the tab to tab. So this right here is gonna go just like so. And it's gonna click in, boom, that's it. Our wire harness is in, we are almost done. We have to do the joysticks next. All right, guys, now we're up to the last part, and that is joysticks. Before we power on the actual Pandora's box, let's work with the joysticks. So I do have Sanwa's. Again, they do have this connector. I mean, possibly you could use this connector. I didn't really bother because it's all about how you orientate the actual you know, joystick. As you can see, I always put mine going towards the buttons, and I always make sure that for easy wiring um, to duplicate, 
you just make sure that this joystick matches the same direction as this. So as you can see, my connect is here, my connect is here. So remember, we did have one ground spare. You could just take the ground wire to the Sanwar stick, connect that. We're gonna splice these ends open. As you can see, there's four connectors. There's basically up, down, left, right. Our challenge is to figure out which wire here is up, down, left, right. All right, so I'm very big on wire management. So once we get the joystick situated, definitely wanna wire manage and make sure everything's nice and tight. Again, we do have the Sanwa connector here. I have my ground connected. Um, for this reason, player one, again, the connector here is low. So we didn't add the extenders yet, but I didn't cut this short. Uh, basically, I'm gonna splice this and on joysticks, and again, we're doing the heat shrinking and all that. I do like to add a little bit more of a length to it. So figure at least about maybe an inch and three quarter when you splice this. Now we're gonna take our player one. As you can see, we do know our player one is here. We're gonna take our player one and now we're gonna cut the white head off, just like so. So we're gonna have all wires spliced. I mean, this is going from the Pandora's box. So these are the four wires. Again, there's four wires up, down, left, right. Our basically thing that we have to trial and error is see which wire does what. Same thing here, four wires coming from the joystick up, down, left, right. We just have to see what wire does what. So off the bat, we're gonna get ready to power on the Pandora's box. So just put the power cord in. And as you can see with the modification that we did, no power switch needed. It will automatically boot up basically once power is given you'll get a little bit of a loading screen, a little bit of an intro video. Now, this right here is like the only tedious, not tedious, once you get it, once you get player one down, player two is the same as like wiring coloring. So we just have to basically trial and error, figure out which wire does what. So as you can see, we're on the main screen of Pandora's box. Every Pandora's box has a service menu. You might as well press that. And we're gonna get basically the service menu. So the big thing here, again, joysticks aren't connected. So we're gonna connect them now. That's what we're trying to figure out. Uh, basically, we have our ground connected to the joystick, correct? So all the, the grounds are connected in the joystick. We're gonna basically just take one wire from the joystick. In my case, I'm gonna take the orange. And then I'm just gonna put it to one random wire, which is red in this case. And I'm gonna bring the panel down and just see which joystick direction activates this certain wire. So again, I'm gonna take any random wire from the joystick. I'm gonna use orange for this case. And then I'm gonna take the red Pandora's box. I'm gonna keep them connected and then basically I'm trying to find out an up, down, left, right. So right now nothing's activating. So red is not up or down. I'm gonna use my yellow. Nothing. I'm gonna use maybe my orange. Let's see. Again, making sure, yes, okay, cool. So orange, wow, okay, cool. So orange and my joystick directional down is down. So I could actually mark this right here. So now I know orange is down, awesome. Again, as you can see, it is literally trial and error. You're gonna have to just go down the list. I always keep the same wire from the joystick and then I basically play with the wires from the Pandora's box. So let's try it again. So now we're gonna repeat the process again. So right now I'm gonna take another random wire. I'm gonna take yellow, for example, and let's just try yellow to yellow. Let's see what happens. So again, we do know that our down works. Now I'm gonna keep going. Oh, okay. So we got up on the Pandora's box, but it is right on the joystick. So as you can see, I'm going right and it's bringing it up. So. I do know that the yellow is up from the Pandora's box, but yellow to the joystick is right. So we don't wanna do yellow for this one. I'm gonna keep yellow in my hand from Pandora's box. Let's try out maybe the red. I'm gonna go red to yellow. And yes, cool, as you can see, up, 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 down, down, down. So perfect. We got two out of four done, so I'm gonna lock this up again. It might be different colors for you guys. This is exactly what I do even on Raspberry Pi builds. You just kind of basically have to play around with it. So we do have our up and down at least. Now, how do we check to the left and the right? So on a Pandora's box, there is key settings and I could do IO test. So you should really, you could really start with this, but um, I didn't realize that you could just have to press A on that. 
<laughs> but you could do that. So again, if I go up, our up is good and our down is good. So now we have to figure out left and right. So as you can see in the video, I know yellow is right on the joystick, but now we have to see what color from the Pandora's box is right. So let's try yellow to red. I'm gonna hold that. And as you can see, I'm going right, but it marked it as left. So yellow is really brown. Three out of four done. And again, we're gonna test it again. So if I go right, right, awesome. That leaves one more person left. That is our green and red. So green to red. I already know it's gonna work. We're just gonna lock it up. And left, awesome, up down, left, right. Sweet, that is our joystick wiring. I'm gonna grab my heat gun. I'm gonna make sure this is all nice and neat. But the great thing with this now is that now that I have this color coding, I'm gonna just basically duplicate it to player two. So I basically have the same setup for player two. We've got joystick wire spliced. We have Pandora's box wire spliced. And basically again, now that we got player one situated, we could just basically copy it. So we have red, from joystick is going to yellow to Pandora's box. So I'm gonna just follow the trend. Orange to orange, green to red, yellow to brown. I won't even have to test it. I'm just gonna wire this right now and duplicate it. All right, like I said, you basically duplicate it. So this is player two. As you can see, I didn't even do the test. I'm gonna do it with you guys. So up, down, left, right, that is the joystick test. Just wanna be careful when you do drop this down. Again, wire management is a big deal. You wanna make sure that that fan doesn't get touched. But now with the IO test, we know up, down, left, right works. A, B, C, D, E, F. Start, as you can see, and my coin. There's a couple of button combos on that, but that's just Pandora's box. We do the same thing here. A, B, C, D, E, F, start and coin. Pandora's box is set. We literally took it from the control panel, brought it to our control panel. We're gonna definitely clean up wiring, but this right here is set to play. Last little stuff for the Pandora's box is when you are done, again, be sure never to hit that fan with the wire, so you wanna make sure it's clear. As you can see with this panel, there's four admin buttons that aren't used. Um, that's really for Raspberry Pi builds or PC builds, but you wanna make sure that no wire is gonna interfere with that fan. We're gonna exit this, I'm gonna show you one more thing. So it says here, button one, start and A. We're gonna go back, which is D. And I usually do exit mode as long press menu, which is long press start. Um, I always set my Pandora's boxes to coin play. This way a track mode will work. Uh, auto exit is a good feature, after three minutes is good. Um, select mode, always keep it after inserted coin. Don't do always allow. It won't have a track mode work. Um, you could pick HD if you want and such. So now if I exit, might as well load up some Street Fighter to end it because I usually do my one hand Hadoukens. As you can see, joystick seems to be good. Street Fighter is always a great game to test all the buttons, but Pandora's box is IO test. You know the buttons work. Let's see if I could hit a one-handed Hadouken, my signature. There you go. <laughs> that is it, that is Pandora's box from a control panel into any arcade cabinet, VicVP game case arcades. Gonna hold down player one start, press the B button, and we're back to the menu.